the power of application. The power of application. I reiterate again the topic, utilize the remedy. Subtopic, the power of application. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we find that this particular message that I share with you today is not just for a selective group. But I believe that this is primarily, as God gave it to me, a twofold uh, exhortation in the manner that this would be a reminder for some, as it is equivalent to the believer, a reminder to the believer and a releaser to the unbeliever. Reminder to those that know the way, but a release one to those that are finding their way. And today we want to share from the perspective of the fact that in the beginning of this introduction to lay ground work to speak toward Revelation chapter 3, as we talk on the medicinal explanation, if you will, that the necessity of being prescribed medication, even a holistic approach, comes from the evaluation of a diagnosis or a prognosis with sound instructions leading to solutions. With the prescription rendered, it does not come without instructions. But these instructions, as I reiterate, ladies and gentlemen, catch this, that these instructions given with prescription lead toward solution or resolution. And the stipulation or the disclaimer is, if adhered to the instructions properly, you will experience your resolution. So in this, as we deal with the medicinal aspect of remedy, there are times that after retrieving the necessary prescription for your problem, many of you can attest to the fact that hesitation hits even when sometimes you feel that you don't need what has been properly prescribed for you. Amen. Hesitation has a tendency to bring fright or anxiety because for some of you, you may think that everything is well, that you had an episode or a moment, and that was just it. But the hesitation also even sometimes leads to complete, total disregard for the utilization of a needed remedy. It later then becomes a description read, but not a prescription used. You have possession of the prescription, but because of decision through hesitation, you only read the description to find that you desire not to take the prescription. There's an overwhelming anxiety of rejection that hits you to say, maybe I'll try continuing without it. To see if, if I can continue living in a way that I will not be dependent on what I feel I don't need. When purposefully having to have visitation with a physician licensed to diagnose and prognose a problem that is truly recorded that there is a problem. 
So having a problem then opens the door of opportunity to discover a solution. And when the solution has been discovered then, it is now, ladies and gentlemen, not up to the physician to have control to make you take it. But they are given the authority as a licensed physician to give you the choice to take it and give you the reasons why. And you're left with the choice in your lap whether or not if I follow these instructions. We're almost there. It's one thing to possess the remedy. And on the other end, it's another not to apply the remedy that which you possess. You have it, you read the description. The prescription is applied to you. It fits your problem, but you don't apply it. Mm. However, when a remedy is utilized as instructed and designated, it prompts the process of helpful healing. I don't want you to miss this part. Very, very key and very important. That following the instructions and the designation that sometimes what causes hesitation, let's be honest, is when we read the side effects. I wish I had a church to talk about here. Side effects is what causes us as a people humanistically to say, I don't know if I'm going to take this. I don't want to experience side effects rather than the fact that taking this medicine, I desire to experience the solution to stop, to cure, or heal my problem. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're sharing this medicinally, but we're going to share it spiritually too. So this helpful healing that's coming is based on an example that I will share by way of case in point found in John. Mm -hmm. John chapter 9 verses 5 through 7. And you would see in the New International Version, John chapter 9 verses 5 through 7, and it states, while I am in the world, yeah. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Thanks, After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva. Next, when he does, he puts it on the man's blind eyes. Verse 7 says, Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. Which this word, Siloam, means sent. So the man went and washed. And lastly, and came home seeing. You will find within these three scriptures out of the synoptic gospel, according to John chapter 9, you find that this blind man regains his sight not primarily based on what Jesus did in placing the mud on his eyes. It was also the enhancement of understanding what application and following directions is all about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That Jesus did one motion, but the other motion that's left in our lap is to accept application and follow Instruction. Right. Amen. Because after the application was given to him, the instruction followed thereafter that said these words Go, wash in the pool of Siloam. And when the man followed these directions, he regained his sight. Mm -hmm. This is the case that I've been listening to you today, but the point that supports the case is Jesus changes protocol in most cases concerning the Bible because we anticipate him to do a particular thing to us right. 
when, when he changes protocol, he's trying to let you know that I'm a God that can do anything but yeah. fail. Yeah. 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 It may not be the same way the first season of your life and how I recovered you right. from death's door or how I stopped the process yeah. that caused a great distress yeah. in your life. But however I do it, all I'm looking for is trust yes. out of who I'm trying to help. Is, is that anyone here today that just, all God is looking for is just trust? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, the point is that when he spits on the ground, he makes the mud, puts it on the blind man's eyes, and then Jesus tells him to go wash the pool of Siloam. But if these healings resulted in eyesight being restored because of obedience. Jesus himself gets his hands dirty to heal. With the understanding of possessing a remedy, but also utilizing application that the remedy would work. In this case, I want to share with you some examples of what it means to understand problem and solution. In this particular case, I gave you from John chapter 9 is the fact that the problem was sight. Right. But the solution was the saliva. <laughs> mixed with mud. <laughs> In other cases, biblically, you will find reflective of God's word that you will see the problem in some cases in our lives is fear. Right. Yes, but the solution is faith. In other instances, biblically you will see that the problem is disobedience. But the solution is obedience. In other cases, you will see the problem being weakness. Finding that the solution would be strength. Problem again, bondage. Solution, freedom. But for all of humanity worldwide, Jesus sees it. By the way, the fact that the remedy that I project unto you is a remedy that I believe would fix all of mankind. But the problem is sin. The solution is my son. Mm -hmm. And he is saying today that even beyond all of your proclivities and your problems, that you are not left to die with the issue. Right. But today I render you Jesus Christ being the Son of God that is the solution to every problem overall in your life in the midst of the side effects that you may experience. Just know He is the end all be all. He is the cure of all confusion. Note that the vital application is always belief. Take a pause and take note there. I have a problem. There is a solution. But the solution will never work if I only read the scripture and hesitate to take the prescription. Follow me. And if I do not utilize application in the process of taking the prescription, when I say application, I'm talking about believing in what is prescribed for you. Yeah. Not just taking it and embracing it or swallowing it. But in other words, here it is, believing what it is that you have been prescribed is going to work. Well, I feel something here. Uh, I'm waiting for some of you to catch up because some of you right now, you've been prescribed to help but you're hesitant about accepting and applying it because you have not really experienced this kind of issue before. It's a nuance in your life. But I'm here to inform you, trust the prescription. <laughs> Set it down on your own and tell somebody around you, trust what you've been prescribed. Uh -huh. Trust the fact that if God may have allowed the problem, for Father, you down to give God praise right here that the problem is not your death sentence. The problem is a setup for a promise that He is already engaged in your life to be the resolution. So here's the repercussions of trying to hasten through this. Percussions in rejecting the remedy. 
is found in 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verses 14 through 16, because you will find that we are now living in an era where we are experiencing the 2 Chronicles chapter 36. In the King James Version, it says, Moreover, all the chief of the priests, we're talking about those in the corridors of order that have the knowledge of Christianity and ministry, as it would be this day and era. And the people transgress, watch this, very much after all the abominations of the heathen. I must stop there. They saw all the transgression of the heathen, and here is all of the priesthood and the church that knows the way to follow what the heathen has done. We're doing it backwards, where the church should now be winning the heathen or the unbeliever, that we stop the diabolical plot of sin and death through salvation to redeem and restore. So what's happening is, as you read further in verse 14, and polluted the house of the Lord. Wow. Which he had hollowed in Jerusalem. Verse 15. And the Lord God of their fathers said to them by his messengers rising up betimes and sending because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. We're almost there. Verse 16. But they mocked the messengers. Lord have mercy. Of God. These are not messengers sent by Satan. These are not messengers, amen, that carry the form of God this tonight and have their own. These are now those that have been sent directly by God to bring salvation to the lost and to redeem those that once knew him. Here it is. And despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people. So there was no remedy. Repercussion happens when there is a rejection and a retaliation towards what's helpful. I have to stop here. I hope someone's catching this. Why reject what has been sent to help and heal you? The Bible says it is until that this kind of action keeps happening that now God has to release wrath to awaken those that know him within the corridors to now experience a no remedy situation. When there once was a remedy, they did not apply the remedy, but they failed to what the heathen did because it was more stronger of an influence of an outsider to overcast their life of salvation. So now the action is backwards. I must reiterate this. I hope you're listening. I believe I have your undivided attention now that we see that the unsaved or the unbeliever is winning the church rather than the church winning the unbeliever. Right. And here's what happens. The Bible speaks this in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 1. He who is often rebuked and hardens his neck will suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. 